Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, you'll be talking about the mean value theorem. So this might sound like you know a scary theorem because it's the mean value theorem, but <laughs> I promise there's no such such. Uh, there's not, I promise it's not as mean as it looks. So that being said. Uh, let's get right to it. So the mean value theorem is actually a very useful theorem in calculus that the uses might not seem very obvious at first, but in reality, there's actually many different kind of situations that the mean value theorem can be used on. So what is it? Let's kind of talk about the definition of the mean value theorem. So let f be a function that satisfies the following. satisfies the following okay so the first one is f is continuous on the closed interval e to b so in this case the a and b are in square brackets so the interval is closed the second is f is differentiable on the interval from e to b where in this case e and b are open intervals so this interval is open and this interval is closed okay if that's the case then we have so if the if these two conditions hold then there is a number c on the interval from e to b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Okay, so with that being said, another way to write the mean value theorem is if you multiply both sides by b minus a, we get f of b minus f of a, and then on this side, well, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, f of b minus f of a times f prime of c times b minus a so this is another way to write the mean value theorem it's the same thing it's just that these are two different ways to write it it doesn't really matter which one you use so this might seem a little bit complicated at first so let's kind of have a visualization of what's going on here so if we go ahead and kind of draw this out visually what does this look like well let's draw a plot just to kind of emphasize what's going on here there we go and suppose we have a graph that looks something like Sorry, I think just yeah. So suppose we have a graph that looks something like this. So essentially what I'm saying is if this point right here is A, so this is x equals A, and suppose this point right there, that's x equals B. Uh let's see, this point right there as a consequence would be B comma f of B. And then this point right there would be A comma f of A. Okay, so let's go ahead and okay, let's just put this a little bit higher just so we have some room. Okay, now if we go ahead and join these two lines, so what I'm essentially saying is that the mean value theorem says that provided the two conditions hold, the connection form the line formed by joining these two points is the same as joining some arbitrary point in between called C. So let me just go ahead and draw this out very quickly. So let's call this x equals c. And let's use blue once again. And let's draw another line. If I think cooperates. There we go. Okay, so all I'm saying is that the slope. Okay, so this so this point right there is c comma f of c let's call this point a and let's call this point b right here so all i'm saying is that the, that the line found by joining points a and b the slope of this line is equal to the slope of the tangent line at point c so that's kind of what this theorem is saying so it says that the tangent line at point c to the curve of f of x so this is the curve f of x so the tangent line at point C found by joining 
So let me correct that. The tangent line found at point C for f of x, the slope of this tangent line, is the same as the line joining points A and B. That's kind of what this term is saying. I mean, let's take a look here. Slope is y2 minus y1, or x2 minus x1, or rise over 1. So the slope of this line, which is this line right here, is the same, so this equal sign, which and that's the same as the slope of the tangent line at point C, provided that those, that those two conditions hold. Okay, so intuitively, this should make some sense. Uh, and if you kind of take a look at this, this is just a more general version of Rolle's theorem. Remember that Rolle's theorem say that the derivative had to be zero, provided f of a equals f of a. So let's suppose f prime of c is equal to zero. Well, that means we get f of b minus f of a is equal to zero. And that means f, f of b equals f of a. But that's just another way of writing Rolle's theorem. So the mean value term you can think of as a more general version of Rolle's theorem. It just happens to look at any point instead of at just at strictly at zero. Okay, so with that being said, so this is the definition of mean value term. Now the applications of the mean value term are numerous. It can be used to prove many, many different things. It's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do. And the usage of the mean value term is not always very obvious. It depends on what you're trying to do, and it depends on many other factors. You might depend be you might try to prove an identity, you might try to figure out something with the roots, you might try to use the tangent line in some way. And you might have to use the mean value theorem. It, not always, but in many cases the mean value theorem does apply in these situations. So there won't be a it won't be possible to cover every single possible example, but I'll try to do a, a few general examples that should cover most of the types of questions you might see in a calculus class. And hopefully with that you should, you should have a sense of what's going on. So let's start with the first example. Okay, so example one. Okay, so determine all the numbers C, which satisfy the conclusions of the mean value theorem of the yeah conclusions of the mean value theorem so mean value theorem on the closed interval minus one to two. So this interval is closed. Okay, so how do we go ahead and do that? Well, let's see. So the function in this situation, determine all numbers which satisfy C for this function. So the function is f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. Okay, well, find all the numbers that satisfy the mean value term for this uh, function. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we know what the function is, so let's go ahead and write that down. So that's x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. And remember that the mean value term, well, that says that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Okay, so in this situation, well, we, we can find what f prime of c is. We just have to take the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. And if you go and plug in c, well, we get that f prime of c is equal to 3c squared plus 4c minus 1. Okay. And then in this situation, well, if you go ahead and use our definitions here, well, we know that b, what b and a are, because remember, the intervals were closed. So f prime of c, well, that's equal to 3c squared plus 4c minus 1. Well, that's equal to f of 2 minus f of negative 1 all over uh, 2 minus minus 1.
Okay, well, we can find what f of 2 is. So f of 2, well, we just plug in a 2 here. So if you go ahead and do that, we will get 14. If you plug in a minus 1, you're going to get uh, minus 2, I believe. No, you'll get 2. Sorry. Yeah, you'll get 2. So if you go ahead and plug these numbers in, we'll get 3c squared plus 4c minus 1. And if you plug in these two numbers, we'll get 14 minus 2 over 3. And then, well, let's see, 14 minus 2 is 12. 12 minus over 3, that's 4. So we get 3c squared plus 4c minus 1 is equal to 4. This means that we get 3c squared plus 4c minus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, so at this point, well, we can solve for c, and we can't directly factor this, so we'll have to use the quadratic formula. Well, so that means c equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 5, so b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, so 2 times 3. Well, this gives minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 76 over 6. But in this situation, so let's go ahead and do this, this means that c1 is equal to minus 4 plus square root of 76 over 6, and the other one is c2 equals minus 4 minus the square root of 76 over 6. Okay, but here's the problem. It needs to be in this domain. If you go ahead and check the value on the calculators for these ones, this is less than minus 1. This is about minus 2 point something. But this one is within the interval from minus 1 to 2. So this is the only C value that works. This one is bad. So we disregard this value and we only include C1. So find all numbers that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Well, what does this mean? This means that this particular value, the slope joining points A, uh, let me correct that. So what does this mean? That means for this curve, I don't know what the curve looks like, but for some, this curve, if I have A right here, so that's equal to, let's let's kind of make this a bit better, I guess. So let's go ahead and draw the points. So this is minus 1. That's 2. And then C1 is a minus, minus 1 point, um, uh, like around here or something. So let's just go ahead and kind of put this together. So I'm just going to very quickly calculate this out. So minus 4 plus the square root of 76 over 6, that gives about 0 0.78, so like that's about here. So what the mean value term is saying is that the slope of the tangent line at this particular point, so let's just, draw, let's just make a better line. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line at this particular point, so let's just make a better kind of plot of this, just so we kind of understand what's going on here. Now, again, I don't know what this, I don't know what this uh, graph looks like, but the point is that the slope at the slope of the tangent line at this point, so this is C1, so the slope of the tangent line at this point is the exact same as the slope of the, ta of the slope of the line joining this point and this point right here. So let's go ahead and join these two lines using a proper good doing this properly. And there we go. Okay, so all I'm saying is that the slope of this line, the tangent line, is the same as the slope of, of this line. So this is essentially what the mean value term is saying. So the slope of the tangent line at point C1 for this particular graph is the exact same thing as the slope joining these two points and the line going through these. So the slope of these two lines are exactly the same. This is what the mean value theorem is saying. So nothing too crazy here. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so this one. Let F be So let me just fix that out, fix that real quickly. be a differentiable function
Okay, so we're told that f is a differentiable function. Okay, so if f of 0 is equal to 1 and the absolute value of f prime of x is less than 1 for all real x, use the mean value theorem So we just go ahead and make that a little bit neater. Theorem to show that f of two is less than three. Okay. So and just to be very clear, uh, let's talk about what's going on here. So and by by that I mean absolute value. So let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. So what, how do we kind of approach this? Well, we know by the mean value theorem that f prime of c, actually, we don't strictly need the absolute value. We can ignore that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so use the mean value theorem to show that f of 2 is less than 3. Okay. All right, now how do we do this? Well, we can go ahead and do a few things. Well, now the first thing we can do is we know by the mean value theorem that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So this is what the definition of the mean value theorem, provided that we have a closed interval. So we're gonna, just, we're gonna assume that. Okay, well, we know in this situation that f of zero is one, and we know that f of two is less than three. So let's go ahead and use that idea. So we know that f prime of c, and since there are only two numbers we kind of have an idea about, let's just you know go ahead and use them. So we're told that f of zero is one and f of two is less than three. So let's go ahead and use that. So we know so if you go ahead and do that, we get f of two minus f of zero all over two minus zero. Okay, so f prime of c is equal to f of two minus f of zero, but we know that's one that was given in the question, and then two minus zero. Okay, now we are told that the derivative is less than one for all real x. Well, by the mean value theorem, the derivative at any particular point x, uh, let me very, make that very clear, the derivative at point c, which happens to be a real number, is equal to this. So that means, f prime of c, the absolute value of it, is less than 1. But by definition, this has to be less than 1 as well. So this means that by definition, the absolute value f of 2 minus 1 over 2 must be less than 1. Okay, so, and then we can use the standard definition of absolute value in which we can open up the absolute values. So we get minus 1 is less than f of 2 minus 1 over 2, which is less than 1. So if you multiply both sides by 2, we get minus 2 is less than f of 2 minus 1, which is less than 2. Okay, now if you go ahead and add a 1 to both sides, we get minus 1 is less than f of 2, which is less than 3. But this part is exactly what we wanted to prove. So you've just proven, using the mean value theorem, that f of 2 is less than 3. So we're done. So once again, nothing too crazy here. Okay, now let's kind of think about this for a second. So that was a really good example. Let's do one more. This one is a more of a unusual example, but it will still work. Okay, so this one has no context as to what we should be doing, but here it is. So prove, prove the following. So prove that arc tan the absolute value of arctan of x minus the arctan of y is less than or equal to x minus y. Okay, so we want to prove this. So how the heck do we do that? Well, let's try using the mean value theorem once again. So we know that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a. over b minus a. 
Okay, now this might seem a little bit counterintuitive at first, but let's suppose that f of x equals tan of x. This might seem a little bit odd because we're working with arctan and not tan, but you'll see in the end it actually matters quite a lot. So let's go ahead and differentiate this. So f prime of x is equal to secant squared of x. And then we can rewrite secant as 1 plus tan squared. Okay, so that means that f prime of c is equal to 1 plus tan squared of c. Okay, so that means f prime of c is equal to this. So how do we kind of go about doing this? So that means we get 1 plus tan squared of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, we know f of x, so f of b would be equal to tan of b, and then right here, so let's make this very clear, tan of b minus tan of a divided by b minus a. Okay, so here's the thing though, because this tan is being squared, it can, it'll never be negative for any value. And since the lowest value of this can be zero, we know for a fact that this number right here, this quantity right here, will always be bigger than one. So we know that one plus tan squared of c will always be bigger than or equal to one. This will always be true. And because this thing right here is equivalent to this kind of statement right here, we know that this statement, so this part right there, will also be bigger than or equal to one for all real numbers. So as a result, we can now safely say that tan of b minus tan of a over b minus a will always be bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, now let's take the absolute value of both sides. If we go ahead and do that, we get the absolute value of tan of b minus tan of a over b minus a. is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, now let's go ahead and kind of uh, break up the absolute value. So if you go to do that, we get the absolute value of tan of b minus tan of a, and then we close off the absolute value. And then we divide by the absolute value of b minus a is bigger than or equal to 1. So this gives tan of a, or tan of b rather, minus tan of a, is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of b minus a. So let's just go ahead and write that down. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. This is why I picked tan. So let b be equal to arc tan of x and let a be equal to arc tan of y. And since the absolute value preserves the sign of the inequality, there's nothing wrong with this substitution. So we can go ahead and write this as, well, this gives us tan of arc tan of x minus tan of arc tan of y. So I'm just going to fix that a little bit. Tan of arc tan of y. Okay, but then this is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of arc tan of x minus the arc tan of y. Okay, but then tan of arc tan of x by definition is equal to x, and then tan of arc tan of y by definition is equal to y. So we get x minus y is bigger than or equal to arc tan of x minus the arc tan of y. But this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So, just as a reminder, initially the question said prove arc tan of x minus arc tan of y is less than or equal to x minus y. Well, that's the same thing. I mean, sure, we wrote the 
thing backwards, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just smooth running over. So you just kind of, you know, write this another way. We just get arc tan of x minus the arc tan of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y. But this is exactly what we, do, what we wanted to prove. So we're done. So we, all we had to do is use the mean value term in a very peculiar way. But nevertheless, as long as you manage to see this kind of relationship and realize it's just bigger than or equal to 1, and then you manage to kind of realize that you have to use tan, it's not too bad. All right, so with that, I believe I've covered most of the difficult examples of the mean value theorem. So if you have any more, more questions, and if you would like to make another video involving the mean value theorem, actually, please let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to do that. But otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. The next video, we'll be talking about curve sketching and how we sketch curves of different functions using the first and second derivatives. See you then.